Hi, uh, I'm Ryan. I um, yeah, like uh, was just said by Christiane, uh, I am the art teacher at Riverside. I'm also the lead for uh, Artsmark. I joined Riverside ooh, uh, three years ago, uh, and before that, I was at another SEND school in Islington for 18 years. Um, there, I we went from a gold um, gold mark to a platinum. Uh, Arts Mark and I've joined Riverside, uh, which is currently a silver Arts Mark school. Um, but after starting the process, um, I, I, I feel pretty confident that we are actually a, a gold uh, school. So, what I was going to talk about was unearthing good practice, which is happening in other areas uh, outside of the specialist subjects, because I, I feel that. That often goes unsung. So I've got a slideshow and I'm wittering a bit, I'm afraid, because it's been a long day. So I'm going to share my slideshow. Okay. Okay. And the headline is why you're probably doing more than you realize. Um, and one of the things that I want to sort of uh, impart is don't be modest. I think teachers are, by their very nature, quite modest about their own achievements. Um, and I think things like Arts Mark are actually, you know, real celebrations of arts and culture which, and creativity which go on in schools. So um, don't hold back when you're blowing your own trumpet when you're going through Arts Mark. Um, it's like being a cheerleader for you, not only for your own uh, department and the school, but most importantly for the children, because going through Arts Mark, if you do it right, is really going to up your game and is going to take your practice to a new level. Um, okay, can I do next? I can't do next, can I? Okay, so um, by capturing and celebrating everything that goes on in your, in your school. So I feel that the reason Riverside is currently a silver Arts Mark School is that I don't feel that the practice that was going on outside the specialist subjects was captured and shared uh, in our last one because I think if it had been, then uh, then my predecessor would have gone for gold. Um, you need to find out what's going on right across the school. So you know, I've special schools are in, in unbelievably sort of inventive and creative places. We have to be because of the nature of children with SEND. Um, and you, you know, there, there's more than one ways to skin a cat and class teachers are just as creative, if not more creative of coming up for different ways of solving problems and accessing those hard to reach kids. Um, auditing creative practice across, um, across the whole of your school, what's going on in classrooms as well as specialist lessons. Um, and you need to start those conversations with those class teachers and the teaching assistants. Uh, they are really invaluable uh, when it comes to auditing what is happening at your school uh, in the creative and expressive arts and not just in the special subjects, because we know that what goes on in the special subjects is fantastic, but also what goes on the creative and expressive arts, which go on to delivering those other lessons are also really, really valuable and make you know the whole sort of picture um so or to the arts practice which is detective work um you need to allocate i mean uh, the way that i start is i allocate time for the special teachers and the curriculum leaders to go through the self-assessment document and identify at the level that you're comfortable with um but then after that approaching class teachers is 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 the next logical step um Approaching them through meetings, I've always found not to be that useful because a lot of them will just see what it says on the meeting and, and not really feel or see that what they do is creative within their lessons. Um, so I find approaching them as individuals or approaching with a questionnaire and you can incentivize those questionnaires with alcohol if you want. Uh, usually a bottle of cava is um, as a raffle for getting the questionnaires back to me is the usual prize um, and basically it's just like a quick A4 questionnaire it asks them about their backgrounds they what's what their interests their creative interests are any talents that they might have how they use them in their teaching of core subjects um, 
where do they go on class trips? I mean, I, I had one class teacher who's got like this amazing relationship with the British Museum that nobody knew about, but the British Museum do outreach with them all the time. But that teacher just just saw it as something else that they did in their class, but didn't share it with the rest of the school. Um, don't forget the support staff. The support staff in special schools, special schools wouldn't run without support staff. And they are, I found to be incredibly, you know, the, the backgrounds that they come, uh, you know, I've, I've had support staff who are job and actors, who've had roles in Netflix dramas, who are musicians, who are artists and photographers of their own right. It's like, this all feeds into the, the, the culture of the school and you need to, oh, and the lights have gone out now, great. Uh, <laughs> um, it all sort of, so again, you know, incentivize that, you know, try and needle out what it is they do, because, you know, it, it all feeds into what's a real rounded sort of education experience for the students. Okay, let's hope you can all see this next slide. Um, so capturing um, what you found from those conversations and those questionnaires, and then sharing that with the other specialists and leaders. Um, and then ask yourself as a staffing group, it's like where you feel you sit. It's like at, in the self-assessment framework. It's like, and you know, hopefully by now you'll have gone from where you feel comfortable to where you feel that you can stretch. It's like, and I found that collating that as, you know, I'm quite a visual person, I'm an arts teacher. So I find collating that as a blog has always been really helpful for me to sort of get a portfolio of, what is currently going on at the school and the practice, uh, the great practice which is going on in school and a great way of sharing that with the sort of the wider community. Um, and then through that, through collating all that together, through those discussions with the other specialist leaders, you can sort of identify where you are in relation to your next level and whether you can push yourself through the application process to sort of budge yourself up a level. Um, so yeah, catch that all in your statement of group commitment and then you've got basically your goals for the process and but they're also your goals for development within the creative and expressive arts uh, moving forward and what it is you feel that you need to hit and to do to move yourself up to the next level uh, that's it <laughs> um yeah, basically that's our Riverside blog, which is called Making Stuff and Making Things Happen. And we've got a Twitter, which I sporadically update as well. And I will pop my email into uh, the chat at the end if anybody wants to get in touch. Um, and yeah, thank you everyone. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to Anne, Andrea and Nicole from the Polygon School in Southampton. Hi everybody and um, thank you for that. Um, Billy is very kindly going to put our presentation, our PowerPoint up for us so that we can pretend that we're sitting in a, a briefing and we can say next slide please Billy. So Billy please would you put our presentation up. Okay thank you very much. So what we're hoping to share with you over the next couple of um, slides and input with Andrea and Nicole is our journey to this point and this is something that I think as a school will be ever going forward. Next slide please Billy. So we are a specialist school for boys and young men. Um, our school has a 70 place designation and um, we are always full. When we started our ArtSmart journey, the school had a designation of 50 and we have slowly increased year on year, as like most specialist schools, the demand for places has increased. So ours is specialism for SEMH, social emotional mental health issues, um, they've been called many different names in the period of my um, headship here, but a place at Polygon can only be ascertained if you actually have an education, health and care plan. We don't have any assessment places. So in theory, when young people come to us, they come to us for the duration of their secondary education. 
Um, if we're lucky, we get the majority of our children who arrive in year seven, but there is a significant amount of um, transience amongst the population as children who are looked after get moved to local authorities elsewhere, um, or we have looked after children brought into the local authority who then have a priority placement at the school. Next slide, please, Billy. So this is, this is taken directly from our vision statement. And at the risk of being dry and boring, I wanted to put this into, for you to have a context of part of our school journey, because this vision statement has probably taken the school a decade to get to where we are now, which captures a fantastic amount of work that is done right away across the school by all members of staff to try and make sure that the young people who come to this school get the best possible education and service from us. Um, so you can see at the bottom bullet point, uh, trying to, to get a vision statement that doesn't run on for 20 million miles or is only the other alternative is so brief that you don't really capture more than three words, it was quite difficult, but we were incredibly, um, important. it was incredibly important to us to make sure that the word creativity actually featured in the vision statement, because truly as a senior leadership team here, we know that when young people have the opportunity to express themselves in all sorts of avenues, actually that is going to make a real difference to their commitment to their own education. So um, creativity is something that we really, really value across the school. And it was interesting, um, previous speaker talking about the art specialisms needing to go out. We did this the other way around. So when we first applied for ArtsMark, it actually it was myself as a head teacher and a member of the office staff that collected all of the knowledge of where creativity was happening across the school as we wrote our first um, statement of intent. And luckily for me, Andrea, and who is going to take over from the slides in a minute, um, joined my school as a, a new art teacher. She is in a single person department, bless her. And within the first month of her arriving here, as I'm saying to her, make yourself welcome in the art room. And just by the way, we've got an intention to do a whole school project, <laughs> which I would like you to help lead and take forward. And this was a project that involved lots of other schools in Southampton as well. So um, this, is, this has been a signature tune of Andrea's work from this point onwards. Andrea is ably assisted by Nicole Thomas, who is one of our senior support um, assistants, who is very talented creative, creatively, uh, but also digitally. So she's one of those wonderful members of staff where, who doesn't panic when somebody says, I need this IT system, but, but uh, uh, Nicole has got it all under control. So between them, they make an absolutely fabulous team and Andrea is going to take you through our journey, which has not always been positive. There's been some difficult times as well, but I'm absolutely delighted with the amount of work and um, support that Andrea and Nicole give to our pupils to extend their boundaries, if you like, to extend their experiences. And I'm really, really pleased in the way that they involve the entire staff it's not just an art department thing, our arts mark. So Andrea, are you ready to take over? Because I think we need next slide, please, Billy. Thank you, Anne. Right, so as Anne said, um, when I first started in 2015, the arts mark was overseen by Anne and um, the office staff. Um, it, as you look through, to sign up for this, that you have to sign up for a new round every two years. And when I started the organisation, I just had a bit of an overhaul. Um, so I think uh, for me, it was a new thing, but it was great. They were, uh, Artsmark was sort of all set up to do their new bit from it um, after that. So as Anne said, we, we had a, a sculpture from Marwell Zoo of a zany zebra. They'd done a previously done a rhino one where you 
pay to join up for this and you get your sculpture and then you decorate it and it was displayed around Southampton. Ours was lovely and it went into the children's section of our local library. So it was a great place for um, other children to see that around the school, around the city. Um, I bought in the Arts Awards, which I'm also going to talk about because that's, a, that's it's really a good uh, accreditation scheme for students and it goes hand in hand with Arts Mark. So it's a, it's a lovely thing to teach within the Arts Mark setting. Um, and at the time, we were looking for alternatives to GCSEs for the national curriculum for, for our boys that join us late. So um, it takes a while to build the bridges to be able to get a good working relationship with them and get them to feel comfortable, especially in something like art where they have to um, give a little bit of themselves, maybe, and they're not ready to or they're not sure about that. So we introduced the Arts Awards for Key Stage 3 and the late entry Key Stage 4 boys. As that's panned out, uh, what's happened is some of the boys that um, are not as committed to art, which is fine, they've got other interests, um, that they still come to their lessons so they can do uh, Arts Awards instead of GCSE, um, as the workload for GCSE is sort of quite a lot for our school to get through even in a two year course so we we, we now have that running through as um uh sorry we have that running through as an uh, uh, a qualification for the younger boys to engage them in art and also for the older boys that aren't managing the gcse that's the arts awards alongside that we do arts mark which involves the whole school and most of our subjects um, can i have the next slide please billy Thank you. So Arts Mark, um, for us as a school, it's attracted funding um, and we get a lot. Of, now I've established us in, the, in our local network, we now get approached quite a lot from um, for galleries, different arts companies that we work with, uh, and recently for some consultations for the Southampton City of Culture bid for 2025 and another company that are interested in arts for young people in Southampton and how we can um, make that better for them so the connecting cultures uh, that's the bit of that as well on there the arts awards like i said it's um for key stage three and late entry key stage four involves whole school projects which is a really good engagement tool i quite often have uh less uh, the, your scheme of work and your lessons going running through your normal timetable but in the same room there's usually a whole school piece of art work going on that boys can uh, work on when they finish that task for their usual lesson or if they're at a point where they need a break from their own work which is we, we you know we can do that in our school because we're a send setting so they've got something they can work on that isn't just about them so it's for some boys in our school it's a good thing to work on a group a group um, piece of art so that their act their art isn't uh, a single piece for everybody to look at. So for people that are really shy or sort of quite scared of art, that's quite a good way to get people involved. Um, that's, we've also had quite a lot of opportunity to have the work uh, in exhibitions, public art, um, and the extra topics, the two things running through the lessons. So you can introduce, if you're, if you're doing something that is quite uh, theory-based, then you can have something that is ju just creativity based running through it. So we, we've had a big mosaic that we did that just said the word excellent and every letter was a different colour. So we did a rainbow thing through it. But it was just a, it, it's what we call um, hands busy, brain empty. So they can just go and do instead of having to think and plan and evaluate. Um, and it's a group thing. So it's not just your uh, personal evaluation of them in arts. So it's a really good um, confidence builder doing that for the students. Uh, next slide, please, Billy. From that, we've got, um, so to initially, it might might cost the school quite, a, you know, a, a bit to get some things uh, set up, but now we're in a, a really good position with three local galleries, the City Gallery and two other galleries that any funding or outside educators or artists that they can work with, they quite often contact us um, to do a project. So as time's gone on, it's costing my department less to do these things. We've worked recently with the Southampton Cultural Educational Partnership, um, which was uh, obviously a local, local 
thing that were was started I think two years ago three years ago um and that was a really good financially a really good opportunity for us because they pay for staff training um, we usually do a whole school trip to the pantomime so that was paid for as one of the um arts experiences gallery workshops were paid for and also we had a tour and theatre company come in and do some work with the school and all of the certificates that came out of that project were paid for uh, the arts award certificates for the individual pupils were paid for um, out of that and the creative apprenticeship these are different organizations that are now contacting us because we um, are known sort of locally as a send setting for um, having work in the galleries. We've had public art up, so we've had um, a billboard. We did a lovely piece of work with some artists that came in and did some workshops with the boys, took the boys' work away to a, a, a current artist who does a lot of work around Southampton. And he made a really a great um, artwork out of all of their works. And then it went on a billboard. Oops. Sorry, I didn't get this on the slide. So, we, and we got given this was the, the artwork that was made. Um, all the boys' separate designs put together, and that was put on a billboard that, um, in a major part of Southampton, so that a lot of the boys travelling to school in taxis and on their school bus could see see that as they were driving past. So, for them to see their artwork out in public with the, the Polygon School written underneath it was really a big step for us um, in terms of engagement for the rest of the school that would, would do art as a lesson, but weren't particularly, particularly um, engaged with it. They would do it because they had to. So it, it really builds a lot of um, feeling, you know, the, the team spirit and a lot of uh, that sense of belonging to the school for their own self-esteem. It's amazing to be able to take their families and just say to people, I was part of that and you can see it out. Uh, could we have the next slide, please, Billy? I think I'm racing ahead of my slides here. Thank you. So the first, first major exhibition we did was the um, British Art Show 8, and that was massive, that for us. Um, we had the work, we worked with an artist called Mikhail Karakis. We had the, all the funding set in. He made a brilliant um, video of all the boys' drawings that we, we'd done, and that was a touring exhibition that ended up in... Edinburgh, I believe, as well. We've worked with a great company, local company with us called In Focus, that does a lot of photography, but are also across the arts. We work with them quite a lot, and they came in and did a workshop where we set up um, the exemplars for an interactive piece in the Tate Modern. So we had some of our boys work up at the Tate Modern. We've had um, locally in Southampton Gallery, we had a Leonardo da Vinci exhibition. Um, with, with actual Leonardo da Vinci works released by from the Queen's collection, which was amazing. But we did a uh, we have a we have an education forum network in Southampton, um, and the art the art network part of that we do uh, every year we do an exhibition. So all the schools we we meet up three times a year. We decide what exhibition we're going to do uh, with one of the galleries, and then the schools do the work and we get a brilliant um, really good exhibition in the main city gallery and the gallery I've, I've got a picture of it coming up but the gallery do a really uh, uh, what's the word a really good sorry I can't think better really good uh, exhibition on that uh, like really professional looking but in mind it's only school children um, the Stand Together billboard that was with Kev Monday, who's a fantastic local artist. Another um, gallery up the road called Show Show Solent Showcase, which is our university gallery, the Arts University Gallery. Uh, we did a great show with them, small faces. So everybody in the school did a face and then everybody's piece of work went in the gallery. So they were all included. There was no selection process. They were all in it. And that actually won an award locally. So that was great. Uh, you know, we were part of that. Um, make a mark that was a really good one that where the boys didn't do any work of their own they went up to an interactive piece of a map of Southampton that was drawn on painted onto the gallery floor and then everybody who visited visited the gallery was invited to draw where what their spot was in the town so for our boys to be able to go and find their street and our school and then draw something on it with magic markers and write their name was that's a really good uh 
different type of art that they weren't used to, that they didn't, they wouldn't have considered that art. So that's a real eye opener for them. And that it really, that one really sort of went across the board to include everybody. So this doing the arts mark stuff and the arts awards allows a lot of people that wouldn't usually have the buy-in or the confidence to do that, um, to, to join in and to, to participate. So it's really up to our participation within the school in lessons. It's really up to the um, self-esteem and the just the options that the boys think that they can have now uh, and, what, and that what they're capable of doing and the, their confidence in trying new things. It's really up to that as well. Really great one we did was the, um, the Mayflower 400, which, which was a huge uh, Southampton drive um, right across the board. There was a lot of funding for it at one point. Um, because 2020 was the year that it was 400 years since the Mayflower had left Southampton uh, port. So there was a lot of work for that. Um, and we had our work put in the online gallery, um, the online exhibition because it was COVID by then. So we had uh, a lot of our work put in for that. And also to do with the Mayflower 400 was we had, um, I think it was £3,000 funding from the local council to decorate the inside of our perimeter wall. So we had artists come in and do some workshops with the boys. Um, and we then sprayed, spray painted the inside of the wall with their designs. There was a lot more to it. We had to do, um, we did a timeline and we did the history of Southampton and things like that. So there was a lot of thought went into it, but the boys got to do spray painting on a wall legitimately which is something they've been asking to do for ages uh, and I was a bit reticent about doing it because I don't want to be when they get caught in Southampton graffiti and then they say they learn it from their art teacher I didn't want that to happen so we found a legitimate way for them to do that and um, could I have the next slide please Billy thank you so culture and community it's just the different sort of types of exhibitions and things we've managed to do the sculpture of the Zany Zebra, um, we, we, I would call this community art because um, of the, it, it actually helped the zoo raise money for Grevy's zebras, which are endangered. So there was a point to doing that. The, uh, we've had an Easter egg up in our local shopping center um, for obviously an Easter display. That was a lovely thing to do. Loads of different schools did that. And we were allocated Alzheimer's disease as the charity to raise money for. The billboard thing in, uh, the billboard picture in Ocean Village, which you've just seen, which I showed you. I've come next slide, please, Billy. So that is the billboard in its entirety. Yep, there's the billboard in its entirety. We said this was a couple of years ago, but we still the boys like the new boys that come in still like to pick out different drawings that they like in it. And they've got thank you, Billy. They've got. Um, they can pick out who they think did what. So that's quite a good conversation piece. Now the next slide, because I'm gonna to have to race through these now. So this is the gallery exhibition that Southampton City Duck Gallery did when we did our Leonardo da Vinci's response, which was basically, um, uh, sorry, figure drawing. And they did, did such a sophisticated looking exhibition. It was amazing for the parents and families to come in. Next slide, please, Billy. This is our Tate Modern. If any of you have been to the Tate, you might recognize that window bit at the back there that's really high up and looks over towards the, if you stood facing the river, it's back left that way. Um, so this, we, we made these um, obtuse little sayings. If you can see the time to panic. This was supposed to be a flight deck for um, the company Narda Airlines. We're not going nowhere. That sort of, it was very, um, it was the, the, sorry the obtuse of it so all of these buttons on here were things you would not find in a cockpit basically and then the the um nada air that's right yeah department for doing nothing thank you christiane uh, that was fantastic we did that work with in focus and then they took this up to the gallery as a the exemplars for other people to come in and join in so this was an interactive piece next slide please Billy. Right, so basically the Arts Awards allows qualifications at a younger age and inspire them to carry on, allows late entrance or low ability students to still acquire a qualification. 
Um, it's great for whole school projects, engagement, participation, ownership. So when we did the inside wall, part of the reason for doing that was so that the boys didn't keep trying to climb it or climb over it or damage it. If they've decorated on it, they look after it more and the other boys look after it. So even the ones that didn't join in on that, now nobody will deface that wall because other people have got artwork on it. Um, yeah, the school improvement activities we do a lot of work around our building and our grounds take getting them to take care of their environment including gardening and that sort of thing we are part of this uh, another trust a, a cooperative learning trust so we pool our resources with other schools uh, obviously it cuts across lots of departments our english department is fantastic they use the arts a lot we have a lot of um theater poets drama we go to interfilm but the english department uses that a lot for uh, english um and also our pshe department uses the arts a lot as well uh right so and obviously the teaching and learning styles it really suits our type of boys our neurodivergent learners um the uh, our autistic boys it's great for asperger's it's fantastic for because it, you, they can take it right up to another level um, and then just general the, sort of a lot of the other mixes we've got where it comes across as personality um, or personal things for them it's really good for that as well because it just it allows them to uh, work at their own pace and be more of themselves I feel than doing a GCSE um, and I believe that's my last slide is that yep that's the, the last slide so I think that's pretty much it. it just, I would just like to say, um, just generally, it's been a great thing to teach in this kind of, so if you're in a SEND setting, it is a great thing to teach. It is, there is a, um, I'm really lucky that Anne, as a, the leadership is supportive. So I've been able to take chances and some of them haven't worked and that's been fine for mm -hmm. Anne. If you're in a different setting that you, you need to have your leadership on board for this because, uh, a few of the things we've done because of the nature of our the behavior of our boys it hasn't worked out we tried to do a whole school decorating of reception where each boy had a panel it just didn't work we couldn't get up to decorate it in the end and other boys were interfering while we were working in reception so as i said luckily i work for Anne, who is happy for me to try things and if it doesn't work we don't do it again basically so i'm finished thank you uh that is that was just amazing. I mean, the things that I really just got from hearing you talk then, Andrea, about the fantastic sense of ownership that the boys in Polygon have of all the work that you do with them and the work they do with each other. I mean, that's just phenomenal. And the community engagement. I mean, it's just it's amazing. And also failure. What a great thing. You know, we have to fail to be able to learn to take things forward. So much kudos to uh, Anne for supporting that and allowing you to experiment and explore and, and have those failures sometimes. So thank you. Um, I'm going to move on now and I am going to welcome um, Amanda Bradley from Beacon Hill School in Thurrock, Essex, who has now joined us. So welcome, Amanda. Hello, thank you very much. Apologies, my Zoom was just not working for me. Um, <laughs> if um, Billy could give me, could allow me to share a screen. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. I got a little PowerPoint that I'm going to share with you as well. And this is going to hopefully give you some idea as to what we're doing. Can everyone see that? Fantastic. So my name is Amanda Bradley, and I am a teacher in Beacon Hill Academy, which is in Thurrock and Essex. We are a school for children with profound and multiple um, learning difficulties. And uh, I was approached to see what I kind of come on and talk about how uh, kind of our journey through ArtsMark, how we became a Platinum ArtsMark school. Um, and also, you know, what have we done since then? Obviously COVID has come up and how have we um, managed that and so on. So I've said that kind of our key thing as a school was that we were using our arts um, to help break down barriers that we come across um, in the community and trying to make the community more accommodating and more welcoming. So this is us. As I said, we are um, a school. We cater for students from age 2 to 19 with severe and complex learning, medical and physical needs. Um, and we have such a wide variety of students, all with very different strengths and different needs. Um, 
that we all students follow uh, their own personalized learning adventures that are developed for them with the support of parents, family, staff, and other professionals along the way. And these are some of our lovely students here. Um, and I think, I suppose it's kind of important to go back to our roots and kind of work out well, where, where did we get involved with ArcMark to begin with? Um, and that was through a program called um, Thurrock Trailblazers, which is run by the Royal Opera House. So the Royal Opera House moved to Perfleet to do a lot of their stage building um, and design in, on site in Perfleet. And when they came down, they set up a program called Thurrock Trailblazer, which I believe was eight years ago now. Um, and they looked for different schools to join them um, across the borough. And the idea was that they were going to help promote the arts in those schools. So we actually joined in the very first year. Um, and in that year, we took part in a variety of different projects with them and, and the, the following year as well. Um, and some of those were on site, uh, like the middle picture here. So we had different um, cultural partners coming to school and running projects for our students. And some of them are off site. For example, um, you have a picture there of us up at the Tower of London um, to do a, um, a piece of work up there, which was really fantastic. But we worked with um, Trailblazer for a number of years. And as part of that, I went on a, a leaders in cultural learning program with them. And part of that was we looked at our school as a whole and we did a cultural audit of what we provide in our school and what we realized was that actually because we run an almost completely sensory curriculum for our students and the arts are is the way our students access the world around them we were very good at having art activities and so on in our school the thing that we came across that we that we struggled with was accessing art activities outside of school or linking with other partners, cultural providers, or other schools because they just maybe didn't understand us, didn't get us, maybe, you know, sometimes we're maybe even a bit afraid of us. So what we decided to do was we moved from being a school who took part in Tarek Trailblazer to actually becoming a cultural partner for Tarek Trailblazer. So we began offering two different projects um, with them. The first one was an inclusive arts CPD, um, and the second one was an inclusive arts project. Um, so just to, I, I'll give you some idea about both of these. Um, so our first one was the inclusive arts project. And the idea behind it was that we were going to um, team up. Uh, so one group of students or one class of students from our school would team up with a class of students um, from another school locally. And that could be uh, primary, secondary, post-16, special, we didn't mind. Uh, we would also have an artist involved. We would come together to complete an art project. Um, and while doing that, also um, work on some kind of like different aims. So these are just some of the skills that we were able to work with um, over the two or three years, uh, over the first two or three years of the project. And the aims were very much around breaking down those kind of deep rooted beliefs and assumptions around working with people with special needs and what they were able to do and what they were capable of doing um, and kind of valuing what they could do. Uh, we also wanted to develop that familiarity around people with profound and multiple learning just difficulties um, in the hope that we could make communities more welcoming to people with special needs. We wanted to develop um, creative ways of adapting the arts um, for all learners and whether that be students like ours or your special needs students in a mainstream school who might just need some creative ideas and how to get involved. And we also wanted to increase staff confidence in terms of leading and developing inclusive projects. So just to give you some ideas of the things that we came up with, these are some different projects we did. This was actually, I think these were some of my students working with um, 30 year one uh, students from a local primary school and they did an art project with an artist called Wendy Dawes um, around the seven continents because that was what the, those students were working on at the time. It was really fantastic. Those students were hitting targets in their art, in their, um, in their national curriculum that they were working towards. And my students had this absolutely wonderful experience of working with mainstream peers, getting to know them, going to a mainstream school and getting to experience what that was like. 
Um, we also had projects, we have two different projects on here. We have um, our year five students going to another local primary school um, and they worked alongside year five students there um, on a music project with one of our internal music therapists, um, Corinne Rhymes, who works on sound resonance. And we also had our post-16 students working with a group of students from Palmer's College, which is a post-16 college um, locally. And that was on a dance project with um, a dance artist called Brian uh, Gillespie from Move to Include. Um, and we also have, um, these are again, some of our students. Uh, these are secondary students and they're working alongside secondary students from um, another local special school um, called Treetops, which is an autism specialist school. Um, so these are just some different examples of the kind of things that we've done. And here's just a little, again, just a little video um, of the kind of projects that have come from doing this. This video was actually created um, by the students that linked in with us. So while they, they came, they worked with us, they learned much more around um, uh, the topic that we were focusing on, which was um, the Titanic. Um, but actually they also developed their ICT skills because they developed this PowerPoint to show what we've done. And this was working with Tenside Primary School and it was a unit attached to the school um, for students with behavioral difficulties that were struggling in a mainstream setting. So. So that was just, as I said, another example of some of the wonderful things that we got to do. Um, that project incidentally was um, done alongside an artist in our own, uh, from our own school, our, our speech and language therapist running um, a program called Listen Tell, which is a storytelling um, model that we use in school. So that was one of the, th one of the projects that we um, started running with Trailblazer. The other one we began offering was a CPD um, for any other school um, locally to join in with. So what we had was we had different artists um, across kind of co covering lots of different things. So we had dance, music, art and storytelling and we had them working with um, teachers, TAs, SENCOs across um, the borough um, looking at how they could go back to their schools and how they could adapt what they're already doing to make it more inclusive, really focusing in on those students with additional needs. Um, something else that came from and something else that we also did um, was we started working with um, other cultural providers to develop their uh, practice and what they could do. So for example, um, I've worked alongside the Royal Opera House um, creating dance program and also the Everybody Dance program in terms of developing schemes of work to make sure that they were inclusive and accessible to all. Um, and that has included everything from reading through schemes of work that they have written and plans that have written and, and given feedback to um, going and observing sessions they ran and given feedback afterwards or actually even going in person and, and, and joining in and helping to lead sessions. Um, and I've also, um, we've also worked with the Royal Opera House to develop social stories um, for different um, parts of their theatre 
um, whether it be the Limbury or the main theatre, um, so that they can be sent out to anybody who needs them, whether that be school or adults with additional needs, to show them what is it really like to come to the theatre to make that a much more accessible place for them. So these are just some of the things that we've done um, on our journey. But of course, like everybody else for the last few years, COVID happened. And I remember sitting there and kind of thinking, oh God, what am I going to do? I kind of feel like I can't do any of the things that I was doing and, and everything has come to a stop and I'm not allowed to take kids out of school and I'm not allowed to bring visitors in and if school isn't happening. The kids are all working from home. What am I going to do? So we had to kind of have a think about how we were going to do that, how we, how were we going to still engage our students. Um, and we, uh, we adapted to what was out there and we tried to work out what would work. So one of the first things we did was we started using Zoom and we really didn't know if it was going to work. I remember sitting there going, there's no way that I can have my students working on here. They can't see me, they can't, you know, how is this going to work? But actually, so, so many of our students really took to Zoom. Um, I think one example is I, I have a student in class who, who was probably on Zoom five to six times a day, <laughs> um, joining in a variety of different sessions. Um, she has a, a very extreme visual impairment and it didn't matter that she couldn't see me. She didn't mind, she could hear me and she could hear the activities and she could hear her friends on Zoom and she could respond to them. And that's what she liked. So we really, we started off with just a couple of Zoom activities and very soon it developed so much further than that. Um, on the screen, you can see two different timetables. So the top timetable is my own Zoom timetable um, for the uh, first lockdown. Um, students had a variety of different sessions they could access every single day. The other timetable is the whole school timetable, and this was open to every student in the school, along with students who had recently left our school um, and, and didn't have anywhere to go, along with other people that we work with to do outreach and who were um, having to shield or isolate at home and needed something to do, they joined us as well. So we we kind of um, tried to reach as many different people as we could. And the really wonderful thing about this was that students could choose. They still had a voice. There were so many different sessions on the go for them that actually they could try them all and see which ones they liked and pick which ones they wanted to go to, uh, which was really wonderful. So our student voice was really um, still um, uh, allowed to happen in this situation. Um, some of the different examples of sessions we ran, we had music and movement, we had um, relaxation, we had yoga, we had story time with me, um, we had sing and song, we had dance, we had art sessions where we would put together art packs and send them home to classes um, so they could join us and do it or we would come up with art activities with just whatever you find around the house um, <laughs> and come up with things like that. And there were some really wonderful things that we were able to achieve through that. We also started linking up with some online cultural providers that we knew. So we linked up with, uh, to see what were they doing online and what could we join in with. Um, so we worked with um, Wonderland Interactive and with Poodle and with Sound About or Story Massage, Sign Along, different um, cultural providers that we have worked with in schools, um, but who just showed some wonderful activities that our students could access. And the great thing about a lot of these things was just because they were on Zoom, for those students who couldn't, who didn't want to access Zoom, who didn't like Zoom, it wasn't working for them, we were able to come up with different ways for them to do that. So for example, I had a student who found all of the excess noise coming from Zoom too much. So instead I sent her home all of the activity packs she needed for the sessions and the PowerPoints. And her and her brother used to join in those sessions at home in the time that worked for them. So they were still able to access them. Students who really weren't able to do either of those the class staff are really fantastic at coming in, making packs for them that, and dropping them to, to, onto their doorstep. So they still had activities that they could do from home. And then even if they weren't on Zoom, we wanted to keep our school community going. So we developed our school Facebook page, something that we had never had until that point. <laughs> um, and this really held our community together. We had all of our students on there, we had all of our parents, they were sharing different things that they had done at home, whether that be joining in with a Zoom session or whether that be 
doing an art activity was sent home in a pack or uh, you know the whole family not just our students but all of the siblings getting up and joining in dance class in the morning or morning wrap and seeing who was joining in so that was really a really wonderful way of tracking everything that was going on um of course you know we did eventually get to go back to schools and um, but if there were still um COVID restrictions in place for a long time and even still now we, we still have quite a few COVID restrictions because of the medical severity the medical needs of, of our students um we still have to be very careful so we still worked in very strict bu bubbles we weren't able to go and see our friends around the school and so on so we still had to come up with ways of, of trying to keep that community going so for example we have we, we now have class assembly um we now have whole school assembly on zoom every week and everybody joins in and we all have our clappers and we all find out who student of the week was and clap along and it's really wonderful because you can stand in the corridor and hear all the noise across the school <laughs> of everybody joining in together and um brian um our lovely dance therapist he still runs a dance class every thursday and pre-covid only one class a term or one class a half term got to do that session whereas now the whole school do it every week all together on zoom and that's really wonderful um, we have our upper school students who now do circle time or morning meeting um, on Zoom together and they have a whole upper school wrap that they do, which is really wonderful to see and um, it's just a really great way of them all staying in touch with each other, even though they can't be in the same class together. Um, our post 16 students who would usually have been off site um, on a Friday going to their Friday links, their links to what they may be working on when they leave post 16 and move on to post 19 provision. Um, they started off doing all of their Friday links on Zoom. Um, eventually we did get to a point where their artists that they were linking with started coming into school um, and working with them then. But the really great, fantastic thing about that was it remained fluid. So when numbers started going up and it started getting a bit more serious again, there was no, oh my God, what are we going to do? It just transitioned really nicely back onto Zoom and uh, those students didn't lose out. Um, one of the things that we did as a school during COVID was we really developed our outdoor spaces so that we could try and have as much fresh air as possible. And now as things are starting to open up, we're really trying to use those spaces. So our bottom picture here is um, of a Christmas fete that we put on um, for the entire school to come and visit. Uh, we had we did our whole outdoor space up like we were at garden center <laughs> because we weren't allowed to go to the garden center and see Santa. So instead we brought it here and every single class came out to visit and every class came out to um, see Santa and get their, you know, go and design what they would like to have in their picture and go and meet the reindeer that were dogs dressed up as reindeer and do all those wonderful things. So it was really fantastic. Um, and I suppose our final thing is looking where we go now, because obviously we are hopefully going in the right direction and there is light at the end of the tunnel so what the really fantastic thing is on the horizon is, is, is kind of the new things that are happening we've come up with some really lovely new ways of working so for example we would have never used zoom before but now we have seen zoom work in new ways so a really simple example is i have stu i have had two students in this this year who've had to remain off of school for weeks on end because of operations that they've had to have and in previous years, we just wouldn't have seen them in school. Whereas now, those students can join me every day on Zoom and still see their friends and still take part in activities. So they're not sitting at home bored and waiting to come to school. Um, we are finally getting to restart some of our Trailblazer projects. So just last week, I was allowed to book our first off-site event. I was very, very excited. Um, where our students are getting to go back into a theatre to see a show. Um, we are starting to book our cultural providers to come back into schools to run projects which is really wonderful um, as i've said we've redesigned our outdoor spaces um, and this is really helping us encourage our school community and our celebration of all the wonderful things we do and we are just in the process of starting to plan those inter-schools art projects again so welcoming in all those other schools that we've worked with in the past and some hopefully some new ones as well so that is what we have been up to i hope that gives everybody an idea. Thank you very much.
So I'm Anna, um, I'm from Olive AP Academy at Thurrock and I'm the deputy head for the quality of education. Um, so we, I'm just gonna briefly run through um, what we do and who we are. So we um, are a trust and our mission um, is our mission is to provide our pupils with creative, nurturing, inspiring learning opportunities, which re-engage them in learning and transform their lives. So um, there are five academies within our trust. Um, we have them at Havering, Suffolk, Cambridge, and Neve Valley, and obviously um, Thurrock. And I work across the trust um, supporting the quality of education. So um, we are really, really committed to looking at how our curriculum and how we develop um, the creative arts through our curriculum. So let me just move on. So there's just a little bit about um, us. I won't um, read it because I know that we are short for time. So we, um, I will send this out. Um, so we develop a curriculum that is underpinned by um, all of the different arts. So music, dance, drama. Um, we also put woodwork into there because that's quite creative. Um, singing, all of those, um, all of those topics. We we underpin our curriculum through that. So our curriculum intent is really, really simple. We want to give our students the real world learning experiences. Um, and we want to do that um, because they have obviously had quite a difficult experience in mainstream school um, and it hasn't worked for them and they have probably haven't had the opportunities um, in a mainstream school because of their behaviour or um, their home life. So when they come to us, we want to give our students that, um, that opportunity. And what we are really, really passionate about is that they're all on a different personal learning journey. And we have lots of bespoke um, curriculum pathways for all of our different students. So um, our students engage from key stage three to key stage four. It is not an option subject. Um, all of our students that come to Thurrock um, do the Arts Award. So there are just a few things um, on there that they have been able to um, take part in recently. Um, they, we do all of the qualifications um, and they, what we like to do is that they all sort of start together, say on a Discover Award, um, but then they take ownership of their own learning and then they go off to the qualification that they want to go to. So they'll all start on the same topic, but then as we finish a topic or we're moving to different materials or different styles or whether we're going to do drawing or recording, and then that's their direction of travel. And then they pick their own curriculum learning. And what we like to do is then feed that through the whole curriculum. So um, we follow the national curriculum, but we are very, very fluid in the way that we approach it. And if it needs to be adjusted, then we will adjust it. So showcasing some of the work. So as you can see here, you can see um, one of our boys. Um, this is actually a maths lesson. However, he is highly interested in construction. So for him to have um, a, a deeper understanding and to secure that you know, long-term memory and prior knowledge, we do maths for him, not every lesson, through a woodwork section. Then you can see at the bottom, um, there is another maths lesson being taken place, but with cooking. But again, those two boys are really, really creative. So we do use that, um, that the designing of the cake and the designing of um, what the other student is doing to, to their art school. So again, it all interlinks in our curriculum. So then on the other side, you can see um, some GCSE art that had taken place in the academy. And then there is some other um, work that has been taken place. So again, the students like to pick um, the topics that they, they do. So Moana at the time, um, they were really, really interested in. So they did lots of mosaic stuff, as you can see. We've done some mask work. They wanted to go and see the Lion King. So again, they had a choice on where they would like to go. And they all said that they would like to go to London. So that was um, back in December. They also have done some stop motion animation stuff, which you can see um, at the bottom. But before they did that, they made their own Play-Doh. Um, 
So they wanted to know the process on how that Play-Doh was made. I mean, all of that stop motion animation stuff was based on the stimulus um, Wallace and Gromit. So they did lots of showcasing of Wallace and Gromit. And now they have made, or in the process, some of them um, are making their stop motion animation. But it is all run directly um, through the curriculum. So I'll stop sharing. That's a really brief whistle stop talk because I don't want to hold anybody up. And I know that I've got some questions. I hope that was okay. Thanks, Anna. That was fantastic. And um, so um, just to say hello from me, my name is Julie Neville and I'm an arts award trainer and moderator, but I'm, I also, as Christian mentioned, work for Trinity College London um, in the business development department for arts awards. So I'm going to drill down a little bit more on arts award and it's been so great to hear um, some lovely arts award stories coming through in your case studies today already. Um, so at Olive Academy, we know in, through your um, school values that you really highly value um, promoting determination and, and ambition among all of your students. An Arts Award can be a real important driver for these values among its participants. We encourage progression and um, career pathway research, that kind of thing. Can you tell us a bit more about how your setting uses Arts Award to have a positive impact on students kind of knowledge of their futures within the arts if they were to choose that as a curriculum um, subject? So, our core values are determination, ambition and, and, and conviction. So again, what we want to do is give our students those life um, experiences. And it's about that wider world because they won't normally, you know, the perimeter that they live in is where they're going to sort of stay, the majority of them. So like I said before, they all start on a discover um, arts award um, and they, you know, they start to learn the basics. But then depending on how they want to progress um, whether it is more filming or they just want to keep colouring, you know, depending on their sort of level of ability, they take and make their own learning journal. So that some of them in a class, if I've got a year 10 class at the moment, and um, there's 10 of them in there, I've got three on Discover because they're not really artistic, um, but they quite like doing some mask work. However, I've got some that are doing bronze, um, are still doing the same scheme of work, but how they're um, doing that is very, very different. So they take their own learning journey. And, and what I want them to do and what I want them to do across the curriculum is actually build their own curriculum. I want them to come to me and say, this is what I want to do. And that's what they do with the art school. So like the boy that you've seen um, with the woodwork, he said, could I do angles and use the stuff that I'm using in woodwork to put in my maths book because that's how I'm going to remember it. So that's how we then look at our curriculum. So now that boy has, you would probably think it's insane. I think he has something like 10 um, construction lessons. <laughs> Some of those are maths lessons, but he likes them in the wood workshop and that's how he does. Um, that's how he learns. And that goes back to, um, to secure that long-term memory for him. That's fantastic and so great to hear uh, that cross-curricular uh, effect that Arts Board can have from maths to woodwork. That's amazing. And also the integrated delivery that you've got that we discover right alongside bronze. It shows it can really happen across age ranges as well. Thank you. So my next question for you is about equality and diversity, which um, for those that know Arts Mark, know that it's one of the key criteria for the Arts Mark, as well as enabling youth voice and ownership of the arts among um, students. So Arts Award shares those values, ensuring that the award is accessible for all young people and developing arts leadership among young people. I wonder if you could reflect for us on some of the experiences in your setting that you've had when Arts Award has supported equality of access to arts and to arts qualifications um, and any memorable stories of arts leadership among your students. Yeah, so again, it's all about, they haven't had the opportunity, well, some of them haven't had the opportunity in mainstream school because they haven't been able to engage in a lesson. So they've been stuck in isolation for <laughs> six months or whatever that may be. So when they come here, um, I want them to take absolute ownership. Um, so we have an arts council 
um, within um, Olive at Thurrock and it's an arts leadership programme. So we have them from all different year groups and we have like a suggestion box and then they will go through the suggestion box. They will meet with my cultural champions um, to say this is what we'd quite like and this is what we would like to do. So they decide on their trips. They decide when their trips are going to be. But what they do, which I really like, sometimes they do it in a good way and sometimes it's not so good way because they want it their own way. Um, that, that if they're So they're doing Macbeth in English and they were like, we really want to go to London, what can we see? So we are taking them in February to see and Juliet. So we've linked their trip. So they were like, right, this is what we want to do. We want Pizza Hut. And this is how we're going to link it because we're doing Macbeth. So I think they were trying to flog it to me like that, really. Um, so, again, they take their whole, they, they plan the trip. They decide where they want to go. They have to work out the budgeting. So, again, that links into maths because I said, you're not going if I can't pay for it. So you tell me how I'm going to pay for it. And they go, OK. Um, so they, they're mixed years as well. I don't want to just put them into, you know, categories of year 10, whatever. So um, I've got uh, some boys in year 11 um, that are sort of looking after these tiny little year nine boys that look like year sevens, um, but they are working together. So now they're mentors for these because they're like, oh my God, he's made a whole barbecue thing. And that's how now we're sort of feeding that through um, for non-engagement because their, their literacy skills are very, very poor. Um, through that so we want the whole curriculum to be accessible and I don't really care how they deliver it um, as long as they deliver the, the, the curriculum and they achieve really good outcomes so if that means they have to build the barbecue again and um, because they need to count and cut the bricks that's how they're going to do it but again they say I want to do that so the boys now want to go um, fishing but they have designed in their room a whole um, the, the whole wall is is painted blue with fish and now I have to buy I've bought some fish um, and they are now in their room so they they conned me from painting the wall to now I bought the fish <laughs> so now I've got fish <laughs> So it sounds like that, that youth voice and that youth arts leadership that doesn't just come through in the ways that Arts Award um, criteria suggests, like sharing skills, but actually there's so much else going on in terms of leading each other, men peer mentoring. Yeah. It sounds fantastic. I love that. My last question for you is a bit more practical, um, but sticking with the theme of access and inclusion. We know that Arts Award um, encourages as much as possible people to evidence their achievement in any way that they want to, no matter their ability or their interest, from scribing to um, electronic media. So, having looked at some of the lovely work on your slides, can you give us a few examples of how your setting ensures that your students are able to evidence their work in the way that suits them best? Again, they, they will tell me what they want. Um, so, again, with the stop motion animation, some of them went, I really don't want to use an iPad, I don't know how to use it. I said, well, how are you going to do it then? They said, take photos and stick it in as a storyboard. I went, Fine. It isn't quite stop motion animation, but they wanted to use a camera instead of using um, an app. Um, I've got a girl that's in year 11. She doesn't like to use any sort of technology, so she will write it and then she will take photos of her own work and annotate it. So again, um, in that group, um, in our medical group, I've got um, the boy doing something completely different that is just painting on canvas the whole time because that's what he finds is his way. And I have, I have the girl that is just scribing, writing, taking photos and annotating. So again, their approaching learning is very different. Their outcome is very different. However, they're still getting their, in, um, they're still getting the, the end result of uh, the qualification. And what I think is really good, because obviously I, I work across the trust, but at the moment I'm just at Thurrock and Havering, um, overseeing the, the, the quality of education. Um, I'm taking some of my students in year 10 to Havering for the year sevens, and they are now teaching them, I mean, I could get the sack, um, stop motion animation. So they're Brilliant. using all of that Play-Doh and stuff, and they were taking that over to Havering. So I started that off last week. So again, that's them showing what they've learned, and then they're taking pictures, and then they're annotating that, um, and helping again mentoring. So. They, they, they produce their own curriculums. Last year, I changed the curriculum of timetables eight times because that's what the students needed. So, um, and I'm just about to change it again um, for February half term. So since September, I've changed it three times already. So this is the fourth time I've changed it. 
that's flexibility right there I think and that, that just goes to show that uh, an Oxford can be a framework that fits around any way that you want to teach and they want to learn which is fantastic so thanks Anna I think everyone will agree you're the, the best interviewee this evening <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Billy and Christiane I've literally got like 90 seconds of like wash up information about arts awards and arts mark is it okay if I do that yeah thumbs up from Christiane thank you we're going to skip the basic one because you'll know I think we've heard lots about arts award this evening and you know the ins and outs so what I've done here is just focus on two um two things and this is really just to um to, to recognize among us that um something that I think it was um Amanda said earlier that arts award can really support the arts mark journey okay so the first one is uh we've got eight arts mark criteria when we're going through the motions of arts mark and one of them is in, in um engaging children and young people and I've just listed out there some of the ways in which arts going through the motions of arts award can help you to do that <laughs> so I won't read them out but there's there's just a whole you know that was just kind of me plucking things out of my mind in terms of what people do day in day out for arts award and how that can tick off so much of the criteria around arts mark from showcasing young people's work to um uh exactly what you were just talking about Anna having like a um a, a group of young arts champions you know advocating for the award and for the arts more generally in your school and um, so that's one little example my other one is coming on to the quality principles so we know that there's seven quality principles um, from arts council england which um kind of underpin the arts mark journey and i chose the one which i felt it felt most pertinent to this evening which was ensuring a positive and inclusive experience and thinking about how arts award can help support you to do that in your school and to really stick to that principle and really just coming back to that flexibility I suppose around arts award around its timings you can do it in the time that you need it to, um, to, to happen uh, as long or as short as you want and um, it embraces all kinds of arts and cultural activity uh, right into heritage and literacy etc um, those flexible evidencing options that we were just talking about with Anna from young people writing and drawing to being scribed for or using an iPad, for example. And it's all about the individual journey, exactly what Anna was just saying. It's about an independent learning journey rather than recording a kind of level of skill, I suppose. We also have, if anyone um, wasn't sure, we have a dedicated SEND focus advisor training that's available. If anyone hasn't trained as an arts award advisor, um, those are bookable um, online. Um, and then finally, really just to say that within Arts Award, uh, within Arts Award you can definitely um, take examples of what you're doing and talk about that in action in your Artsmark Statement of Commitment and your Artsmark Statement of Impact. So that's some more sort of practical tips. And um, we have a resource that maps this out properly over a few pages. Um, it sits on the Arts Award Advisor Hub. Um, I can also send it over to you. So do get in touch um, with us if you want to, to have that and to, to read in a little bit more detail. Maybe you're on the cusp of submitting one of your statements and you're not sure how to talk about Arts Award within that. Um, just give us a shout and we can let you know.